cybersecurity TikTok, a unique subset of the platform. Now, when I was trying to get started in cybersecurity, I did dabble on TikTok, looking through videos to kind of guide me in my journey, see what skills I needed, what certifications I needed to get a certain job, what job I wanted to get, what jobs attainable, salaries, things like that. So I have used TikTok a time or two as a resource in my cybersecurity career journey. Was it a good resource? We're about to find out. And considering I do cybersecurity social media, I'll let you be the judge if it was a good resource or not based on this career. Let's get to the reactions, shall we? Now, I just got to this by searching cybersecurity in the search bar. So these are just the first videos that popped up on my, on my feed. Let's do it. I got my coffee. Let's see what cybersecurity TikTok has to say about getting a job in cybersecurity. Okay, first one, we're gonna have to pause this because it's copyrighted audio and it's a picture slideshow. This one says, how I broke into cybersecurity. Let's see, cybersecurity girlies do not gatekeep. I know that's right, queen. How I got my job, bachelor's in IT, certification from ISC2, worked in help desk, found out about GRC, studied SOX, SOX compliance. I have not actually ever dealt with anything SOX compliance before in my cybersecurity career, but respect to those who do. And just compliance in general, because that, that sucks. I don't like compliance. I don't like dealing with compliance. Shout out, shout out to all my compliance warriors out there. Started off in help desk IT for two years in college, pivoted to GRC. Career goals, complete graduate degree in cybersecurity, CISSP slash CISA, R C I S S P slash C I S A, gain experience, then possibly join leadership, teach classes, possibly a law degree. Slay, girl. Resources for GRC, ISC2, ISACA, Security Plus, Gerald Auger, Simply Cyber. Shout out, Gerald. Mutual mind, he does have good content. OCEG, which I have never heard of before. ISC2 has a free certification called Certified in Cybersecurity. It took me one month of studying the past. So I don't really know much about those certifications since I'm not in GRC and I hate GRC, to be fair. Um, but yeah, seems like all good advice. Obviously, Security Plus, literally bare minimum. If you don't have Security Plus and you're trying to get in this field, what what are you doing? What are you doing? Here's the exact roadmap that I would take if I had to restart my cybersecurity career from scratch. I would start with the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificates offered on... I've never taken that one, but I heard it's good. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if it's good. Coursera because you don't need to have any prior experience or background in IT or cybersecurity to get started. After that, I would get the Security Plus certification and follow that with the Network Plus certification. Security Plus and Network Plus, good. I have both. Getting Security Plus and then following it with Network Plus, that's also what I did. Um, but normally people teach you to go like A plus network plus then security plus, but really you can just do them in any order. I mean, if you already kind of know some security concepts or if you already don't know security concepts, you can just learn security plus and take the test, which tells you it doesn't actually teach you anything practical because it's all theory. That's what these tests are. Just all theory. Um, but that's a whole nother rant about certifications and theory and how certifications do not prepare you for jobs at all. But that's a that's a whole nother rant. And both from CompTIA. After those, I would look into an entry level cloud certification like the AWS Cloud Practitioner. Once I get those certifications, I would start building up my resume and start applying for entry level cybersecurity jobs. And cloud certification, really good. You could get Cloud Plus if you wanted to, to keep it like vendor agnostic. Uh, but yeah, like AWS, Azure, pretty, pretty good. 
the internships. And while I'm applying for these jobs, I'm going to build out my personal projects in my portfolio and add those to my resume as well. So I'd also look into more certification. Personal projects and adding them to your resume is very good. I would suggest doing the same thing. Also posting your personal projects on LinkedIn. Very good. Also would make that suggestion. All good things that align directly with what I want to do in cybersecurity. For example, if I want to do the blue team or the SOC type of role, maybe I look into the blue team level one certification. If I want to do more offensive security and red teaming, maybe I look into the PNPT. These are both begin. I've heard a blue team level one. I've heard many people taking it, passing it. I've heard it's good. Uh, PJPT for the pen testing side. I've heard that one's really good too. Um, I've personally never taken both um, because people go with like certified ethical hacker CEH, but that's like extremely, extremely outdated and you should not get that certification. Um, yeah, steer, steer clear of that one. But yeah, all in all, pretty good advice. Again, certifications, you can get all these certifications he mentioned and still not get a job. You could get some of the certifications and still get a job. You can get a mix and match of them. Still get a job, still not get a job. Just to say, roundabout way, certifications do not guarantee a job. Don't believe the lie. The cybersecurity industry has fed you. Hello? No, I'm not going to unblock Sims Online. We have, no, we have the firewall set that way for a reason, okay? It's a company policy, and we're not making an exception for you. Please leave me alone. I'm, I'm really busy. No respect. Okay, back to Sims. That one is a little more accurate. You see cybersecurity in movies. They're all hacking. It's all command line. Cybersecurity in real life, dealing with a bunch of end users, technical term, for customers in the field, dealing with a bunch of silly end users, and lots of customer service, oddly, and lots of like typing in Word documents and Excel spreadsheets, and none of the fun stuff. At least in my experience, as a cybersecurity program manager, it's a lot more talking to ignorant end users and CEOs about things they could be doing better and them not caring. The ugly truth about cybersecurity in 2025, read description. I hate when influencers do this. Just a text and then it says description. It said if I wanted to read something, I would be on Twitter or LinkedIn. Anyway, no hate the Dax vlogs. Lots of influencers do it. I personally despise it. The ugly truth about getting into cybersecurity in 2025, everyone hypes it up. Big pay, cool tech, hacker vibes. Hey. But here's what they don't tell you. Entry level means three plus years experience. True. Job hunting feels like a full-time job. True. Burnout is real. And ticket fatigue is no joke. Real. Always learning or you're left behind. Real. Ticket fatigue is really no joke. I hate tickets. I hate dealing with people. And yeah, I just despise it so much. I feel like a caged animal every time I have to hop on a call or remote into an end user's computer. Cybersecurity hard? The answer to that question is no, it's not hard. Cybersecurity is so much fun in my opinion. You literally get paid to be nosy. Like, what? Every girl, that's every girl's dream. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I think. No, but I'm really passionate about this job. I took on cybersecurity because I have to have certain challenges to keep me stimulated. I get bored very easily, and when it comes to cybersecurity, you are never too bored. If you're wondering... That is true. When you're in cybersecurity, you're never bored. Or you're always banging your head against the desk. 
if i code no i do not code we have tools for that that already have the code within them now i will say this my coworker did have to code a certain parameter within our security tool because they were taking too long and he just wanted to do it himself now i do have a computer science degree which is heavily involved in coding however am i great at it no i'm not but i don't have to do that you really just have that is true for my job i don't do any coding I know the basics of like Bash, Python, PowerShell, but I don't, I don't code things. I don't script things. Like she said, we have tools for that. To stay up with the new malicious attacks that are happening, the new vulnerabilities, the different tools that we use. There are some days where it can be slower than others, but you can always find something to do. And sometimes it kind of balances it out because one week you'll probably have a busy week and then the next you'll probably have a very slow week and you're just like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Now my position in the position you are interested in may be similar in the sense of general cybersecurity. However, the company is going to be completely different. Construction company, banking company, you're going to see different things throughout those companies. They're not all going to be the same, but again, that is true. Depending on your company, cybersecurity analysts in one company can mean something completely different for a cybersecurity analyst in another company. It is not one size fits all. All companies run differently. Their services are different. Who they serve is different. So everything is not one size fits all in cybersecurity. That includes jobs, certifications, things, things of that nature. Anyways, that is it for the video. Watched some good cybersecurity TikToks. Shout out to all the creators mentioned in this video. And yeah. I'll, I'll see you in the next one.